Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Zareth Prevails, a Grand Arena story. We're getting close to the end of the season, guys. Uh, right now I'm at 9-1 and one, moving into this match. Uh, this is the semifinals. And um, yeah, the, this is kind of going to be a weird video uh, for you guys. So what what's happening here is uh, I forgot to record the video, frankly, um, on my side of things. So we have the Twitch stream uh, for half of it. and it, So you can see, like, Black Mamba joined us for just a couple minutes. Um, so you'll, you'll see him doing commentary. I'm going to be doing commentary in the background, so you won't be able to hear our uh, in-person voices, except for, like, one tiny part. And then, um, otherwise, though... Uh, then uh, after a certain point, I did remember to start recording, so then I switched to video that I took just from uh, my computer itself, so uh, what it, it's going to be, hopefully not going to be a jarring transition, and frankly the video quality is much better halfway through uh, and forward, so uh, anyways, that I'm going to be doing a commentary, nothing too fancy today, uh, but I will show you the end results and everything, so I hope you enjoy the match. Also want to throw a huge shout out to all of my patrons. You guys are amazing. Really, really appreciate the support, guys. You guys are truly heroes to me. Um, I, I've been able to do so much stuff with this channel, and it is really doing a lot better because of you guys. Almost all, almost all because of you and your support. So thank you so much, truly. And I'm facing a dude named Wolf Master. Or Wolfmaster. I love it when people just run their names together. But he capitalized the M, so he's he's making sure we know it's not like one word, but it is one word because he didn't doesn't have a space. So don't know quite what to make of that. Um maybe it's Wolfmaster. That's what it's supposed to be. I don't know. <laughs> uh anyways, so he is a dark lord, so we'll give him some benefit of the doubt. Um all right, folks, so um, the rest of this is going to be voiceover just for your reference. Um, but I'm not going to show you guys my full defenses. The The big picture here, though, is the fact that my opponent always, no matter what, always, always, always has set both Galactic Legends down, even though they're not very great, frankly, at uh, clearing their own Galactic Legends with off-meta counters. You'll see in a little bit that they placed Watt with General Grievous, which means that they probably just can't use Darth Vader or Darth Revan to be able to counter Rey. And I knew that going in, so I placed my own uh, my own Galactic Legends, had to clear his Galactic Legends, and uh, frankly, I, I felt pretty confident going in. I wasn't sure about the Rey uh, squad. You guys will see that in just a minute. But the, the fact is, I felt pretty confident that he wasn't going to be e even able to clear my back zone, which had, I think, Darth Revan in it and all sorts of, uh, all manner of fun treats for him. So uh, let me show you the defenses in each zone now. Okay, so you can see the Kylo team is pretty uninspired, frankly, uh, so is the Ray team. They're pretty standard from what you see, uh, which is almost substandard or something. Like, it, it, you don't see this combination of characters too often. Like, usually it's a little bit... Uh, Usually it's a little, little, little bit more complex. Up top, there's a bunch of pretty bad teams, but you note that Newt, uh, or rather Grievous, has Watt in there with him. Uh, pretty pretty crazy to me. Um, just means that you can't take out uh, Supreme Leader Kylo or Rey, honestly, with an off-meta counter. So I don't know what my opponent was really doing there. Um, and so jumping into this match, this is pretty standard. Uh, Finn does not have the lifeblood... Uh, buff, so my thought was I could potentially just take him out right away if I got enough debuffs landed. Um, he does have buff, or, or rather crit immunity, so I didn't actually kill him. That was uh, perhaps a misplay on my part, but the good thing about Vader lead is you get, you get so many turns and their dots don't go away. Like, you eventually do just take them out. Like, he just slowly strangles the whole team, uh, unless they have some kind of a mechanic that means that damage over time doesn't do anything, but um, so, so now even as solo is adjusting my screen here on our stream, um, <laughs> but 
Uh, you can you can see I'm trying to figure out like should I try to just kill L3 here? Should I try to do another uh, force crush? And eventually I decided yeah, force crush is fine. Um, we can get the taunt onto uh, short trooper, even though short trooper is only gear 12. Um, he, he's still probably tank a little bit, and then I need to, there's a, there's a taunt on L3, it's just gonna be there and annoying us for this whole time, so I decided with Thrawn, instead of trying to fracture L3, because we want to fracture Ray, instead I would hand the turn off to Treya, and, um, she could isolate L3. Once she isolates L3, then we can fracture Ray. And um, Shore Trooper, of course, just bit the dust pretty quick. That was kind of uh, annoying of him. Finn, in return, got taken out. And now we're trying to take out Ray before she gets her ultimate. Uh, hopefully we can get a saber toss on her uh, pretty soon. Um, she, does, she does have a bunch of damage on her already, or rather uh, debuffs on her. So, uh, just trying to time it perfectly here. We don't want to have, we don't want to target Ray with that. We targeted Ray with Murderous Massacre, or Merciless Massacre, uh, so that Watt would maybe put an extra damage over time on her. Um, and that, that did work. And then eventually, during the Murderous, uh, whatever, Massacre by Vader, I did manage to take out Ray. So, now the rest of it is just clean up, frankly. I'll speed up the fight just a little bit. And uh, really what we're trying to do, I mean, it, we just want to avoid the timeout. This, we have the win here, but we don't, we want to be efficient. We don't want to, we don't want to have many fights on our hands here, obviously. So, uh, take out Holdo because she's repressing our ability to do crits. And now we try to take out L3, and L3 is pretty slow. We don't want to reduce L3's turn meter, uh, even though Vader does reduce her turn meter quite a bit uh, through his lead. Eventually, her damage immunity is gone. We caused two, or 650,000 damage uh, to uh, the future brain of the Millennium Falcon. And uh, now we're going to try uh, using the Jedi Revan uh, uh, counter with Jedi Luke to Supreme Leader Kylo. And this is an interesting fight because I do this on my climb every day. I never fail this fight. Uh, but something happens here that almost never happens. Uh, there, there's like a combination of uh, factors that is uh, pretty deadly for my team. So you can see, I, I just recently made a video actually about how we do this. Uh, so I'm not going to explain all the step play by play. You can watch that. Search on my channel if you want. Um, but you see, I did an ability block with Old Ben and it didn't stick to Kylo. So what happened was Kylo then uh, did an AoE. He cleansed his entire team. And so now I'm left having to, like, how do I not kill a character? We need to kill Red Trooper before Red Trooper just kills the entire team through his AoEs. So we did manage to do that. Uh, need to try to take out Hux if we can here. Uh, there's two tanks taunting, um, and the, the way this match looks is totally different now from what uh, it it normally does. Uh, you can see the turn meter or the ultimate meter on Kylo is actually pretty high already um, and he, he was able to kill Revan here before I could get the taunt off with old Ben. So he was a well modded character. Uh, he's pretty fast. Uh, didn't manage to kill First Order Stormtrooper and now I'm losing guys so fast I, I haven't even managed to uh, haven't even managed to take out both tanks and Kylo is like basically ready to use his ultimate. Does one more AoE and um, we haven't even killed everyone and he has his ultimate ready. So uh, pretty crazy turn of events. I've never really had this happen in Arena much at all. Uh, my counter is pretty consistent but uh, it, it does happen. Now, I did target Kylo here. You see, I'm using my, um, or, or I targeted him for a second. I, you can use his uh, stun, Luke's stun, to decrease the um, ability, or to decrease the uh, max health as usual, even if Kylo's in, um, even if he's in his... Uh, ultimate so unfortunately i didn't get blind off either there at the end uh, if i had gotten blind off he would have missed his basic and i would have actually still won um really frustrating turn of events i was really confident going into that fight and i lost it not confident going into the vader uh, fight but after looking at things i, I decided like 
I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to clear my opponent anyways, uh, even if I use a really, really expensive cleanup squad. So I use General Skywalker to get the guaranteed 39. Well, it wasn't guaranteed that I'd get 39, but uh, I did get the guaranteed front zone clear because he can't clear my front zone. Um, so in the back, nothing too crazy at all. Um, so what we're doing now, we're up top and we're trying to take down this General Grievous squad with Watt. And um, so we have Chupio here at Relic 5. And you remember last, uh, last match we had to use uh, Commander Luke, uh, or rather we had to use a Jedi Luke team to kill a Commander Luke with Chupio. Now he's on offense, wanted to see if he could take out this General Grievous squad. So we took out Watt first, uh, that's the first step, and now we need to take out B2. Um, and then, it, like, all bets are off. This this match always turns into chaos because Grievous is always super angry that you're killing his droids. Um, he, he's like, my, they're my droids to kill, damn it all. And um, <laughs> so uh, he doesn't really take too kindly to us messing around with that. Um, 3PO is just about dead. Um, I'm trying to find the one where I can blind people and heal myself and dispel all my debuffs. Um, and it's really it's the first special but i was i was looking at my abilities um i haven't used him a whole bunch so uh cleansed a bunch of my stuff i still have target lock on everyone uh, more's the pity i did uh manage or i did try with luke to um take out grievous's turn meter and maybe it worked and then he just gained a bunch more i i don't remember i didn't watch it fast enough and i'm not going to go back and see one of you guys can go back and see if you like and tell me i was wrong in the um in the comments i'm sure that will happen uh, that'll be pleasant for all of us so um anyways the uh, i i will say i'm pretty inexpert at this match uh, so i don't really <laughs> i won't say that i did everything perfectly well here uh 52 is not a great score but it did kind of satiate my curiosity it was it's a pretty scary match um and I actually do try this again in my next match. You guys can watch to see what happens there. Um, but it's overall, it, I, I did get the win there. And um, at this point, Black Mamba had left us. And um, this is actually the last match until we switch to the other video. Uh, the the fact is the the Geonosian squad. I was like, okay, this is gonna be easy. I, all I have to do is use Night Sisters. Night Sisters are very basically a guaranteed win against Geonosians. Um, and as long as I can do that, then I'm good. Like, but I need to make sure I need to make sure that the geos are gone before I go uh, basically terrorizing the rest of uh, the roster that my opponent has laid out for me. And um, so, we're, things started decently. Um, you know, guys, nice sisters are dying. That's good. Uh, geos are not quite dying, and that's not so good. But. Um, Really, I mean, it, it always looks bad with Night Sisters. It, it eventually, usually, just ends well against Geo's. Like, I, I haven't lost this yet. I I haven't seen Solo use, lose it yet, and he has considerably weaker Night Sisters than I have. Um, it's just a, it's a pretty hard counter as long as you're being attentive and not uh, being uh, filthy casual. Um, so, anyways, we got the double stun there. Pretty cool. Um, Things are looking good. Like the most of the protection is off of the geos. There's a bunch of stuns everywhere. Uh, there's been a bunch of death from Night Sisters, so that means that Old is not going to be taken out. Even Zombies retaining her uh, her taunt, and then I crashed randomly just with Nox. I've never crashed with Nox before ever, um, except for just like a couple tiny times. Uh, not in not in combat though. So. <sighs> not the greatest, not the greatest at all, and that that was actually the point that I, I remembered to start just recording it on uh, my own recording program, so now we at least get a bigger screen, but unfortunately we lose Night Sisters, and I don't really have a team. Like, I went so heavy on defense, uh, like, my defense is crazy. You guys can see my defense next match, it's basically the same thing, um, but I, I go very, very hard on defense, both my Galactic Legends... Darth Revan, etc. Um, and I, yeah, so we, we lost Night Sisters, and I don't have a squad that can beat the Geos easily. And I, I was starting to stress out, stress out pretty big, um, <laughs> but um, decided that 
instead of just uh, beating myself up too much, I would use uh, my troopers to get a kill on this Phasma squad. And to those of you who run this Phasma squad uh, in Grand Arena, please continue to do so whenever you ma match up with me. Because it is just a really easy uh, 60 banners, frankly. Um, it, it can be a little nerve-wracking. Kylo is hard to take down a lot of times, but he doesn't have Kylo Ren unmasked making him ridiculously tough. He just has his own natural frustrating abilities. So um, I was debating whether I should put Death Mark on him or not. That would mean that I can't target Phasma anymore um, uh, because it's, it acts as a taunting mechanic. Uh, but I do have enough AoEs, I decided. I could probably take out uh, Phasma, at which I did. As you can see, uh, Sh Snowtrooper was only too happy to accommodate. And uh, we got the stun on Kylo and took him out. 60 banners, pretty easy. Uh, this, this Phasma squad is just not very good. If, if you have faster troopers, then you're just good to go. Um, pretty ridiculous. So... Uh, then, less ridiculously, we have this Newt squad up top. We have to use uh, my Kylo Ren Unmasked team. Not have to, but just because of how many teams we have. Like, I've already lost a few. Like, I, had, I lost uh, both both my Jedi teams. Like, my 501st with, um, with General Skywalker and my uh, Revan plus Luke. Both on Supreme Leader Kylo. And then we lost our Night Sisters on Geos. So... Our list of allies grows thin. Um, so what, what happened here, I was trying to figure out what turn order I wanted, and I didn't want Dooku to make everyone disappear under stealth. So what I did, I, I, uh, my first order officer was faster, and I um, handed the turn to Kylo Ren Unmasked, who stunned Dooku, and uh, then I was able to eventually get a turn with... Um, was first order executioner, and I we could I could dispel the uh, the damage immunity on Droidica, and after that we're kind of just off to the races. Do, you you always want to pay off your uh, the extortion from Newt. That's all. That's kind of uh, in my opinion, that's kind of a gimme. Um, but otherwise, uh, the the rest of the squad. Once you can take out Droidica, like Droidica is really the key to this team. If if you can control Droidica, then you're good. If not, uh, it can be a little, little bit dicey. So, I uh, managed to get a big hit on Nest, and um, so now we can put Django into timeout because he's doing a ton of, he can do a ton of damage. He has a bunch of uh, turn meter, or he has a bunch of damage from his, uh, from his bounty hunter uh, ability, his contract that he has. Um, so if we can put him in timeout long enough, then he's not going to do any damage. Uh, and now he, we can actually damage him if we want. I'm, I'm kind of bouncing back and forth. Like, should we kill Newt? Should we kill Nest? Should we kill, like, who should we kill? Because Jenga will come back, um, Newt will come back, and Nest is tough to take out with anyone um, other than First Order Executioner or maybe Kylo. So uh, just kind of juggling a lot of things here. Um, I was, was thinking about maybe taking out Nest here, uh, trying to use a big hit on Nest. Instead, I decided for an AoE. Um, Got to reluctantly pay extortion here. And now it's like, can we kill Nest? Do we kill Newt? Who, like, <laughs> who, who, who knows what we're supposed to do now? So, um, in the end, I, I just stunned Nest. Uh, so now Nest can't do anything because she's stunned, um, and well, people can't do anything when they're stunned, apparently. So, uh, it's just a matter of juggling and control. As you can see, we, I did manage to kill Newt, he got extortion off, and um, just decided I, I was gonna just live with the extortion, um, with the extortion being there. I really needed to get a stun on Django if I could. So, uh, sent First Order Executioner to take him out. Um, so now, Extortion is going crazy, but we don't care because everyone's gone except for Newt. And um, our team is thoroughly extorted, but I do have to exhort my team for beating that squad. 56 is a pretty good banner amount for the number of relics involved that we had to take out. I would say most people wouldn't venture their uh, Kylo Ren unmasked team. Uh, into that madness, so uh, got the clear there. And now we have to take out these geos. I don't. I didn't have much. I had like bounty hunters. Um, 
I had like an Emperor Palpatine squad with Remnant Sith. You know, like I, I already used Treya, so we don't we can't use Treya against the Geos. Um, the I, I do have Nihilus and Scion, which kind of worked uh, a few matches ago, if you remember, uh, that I finally like was able to Zerg down a Geo squad. But otherwise, like I just don't have any more like super great counters to Geonosians. Uh, I eventually landed on something that I think you might enjoy. Um, after looking at their speeds, I realized that my bounty hunters were all probably fast enough to pull something crazy. So you see here I'm using Aura Sing lead and uh, Bosk goes and now what we have to do, we have to do, we have to use 10 abilities. It doesn't have to be in our turn, just 10 abilities and we'll get our uh, bounty hunter contract. So you see Bosk called his big assault and he, we're already at 70 because everyone has at least stealth uh, and everyone has offense up too. Um, so we just have to do one more ability. Bosk is good to go. Now Mando goes disintegrates brood alpha and that's it like as long as your squad is fast enough it was a criminally slow brood alpha which allowed us to do that i i'm going to start optimizing my my bounty hunters though because this is a gear 10 or a sing believe it or not and the rest of them so grief and mando are both gear 12 i got them to seven stars recently um and pulled the trigger on their gear 11 pieces and then uh jango and bosk are both um are both gear a relic like four i think at this point so uh those two aren't bad but this is a fully reliced except for poggle uh geonosian squad and we just popped it like it wasn't wasn't close like we uh, and if you can do this actually if you can make sure that you're getting enough crits Mandal mandalorian will speed your squad up you'll feed turn meter so uh that it's a pretty cool pretty cool opportunity to try something new i guess um and honestly, I'm starting to think, like, you guys have seen me get a lot of kills with my Imperial Troopers over the course of time. I honestly think that this squad, this Bounty Hunter squad, I don't know about this exact composition, I'm not saying that, but I think that this squad might end up being kind of like the new Imperial Troopers. That, that's my initial impression. Like, you can kill some surprising stuff if you have them modded correctly, so... 40 really really clean banners against like a team I was pretty sure I wasn't going to be able to clear. Like I thought that I'd be able to get the win just because I didn't think my opponent could clear my back zone or my front zone. I was pretty sure because uh, they didn't save anything other than just random crap but uh, and their history showed that they weren't they didn't have off metas uh, figured out either. Uh, so anyways, I, I did have a bunch of teams that could probably wor work against this Finn team. Everyone was like, dude, don't use Kira Nest. That's not going to work. That's ridiculous. People have this really bad uh, impression of Ma of the uh, smuggler, or rather the scoundrel team. I guess they are all smugglers as well, aren't they? Um, but uh, here's, here's the thing. I was feeling... I don't know if reckless is quite the right word. I was just trying... I just wanted to try a squad I don't get to use very often. Like Nest, uh, Nest and Kira are a really great tandem. I've never used the veterans with them. Uh, I just threw in Vander at gear 12 just for fun. Um, and really, the goal here we just we don't want Nest to get stunned. She can get stunned, and uh, if, if she does, and she's the only one ar around, then she'll just time out. Uh, but over the course of time, if you can just uh, take take these guys out like Kira's great at keeping her guys alive you can see that Nest is actually stunned here um but uh Vander can keep people alive and you know if you take a full team with Kira Nest I think that a lot of times people kind of get stuck in this idea that you have to use Kira Nest uh solo or you know so to speak like Kira plus Nest and no one else and the fact is Kira teams are just really resilient and strong against a lot of guys like I think that a lot of people would are like knowledgeable people would argue that a Finn lead is actually a pretty good lead. Like his guys do a ton of extra damage. He has uh, damage that he slowly uh, increases, and then the veterans are also they've been proven to be really strong. And you can see um, that <laughs> these these this team where I'm going toe to toe with them. Like Nested did end up getting a good good hit in on Veteran Han. Uh, but, 
uh, if if we can just continue to play this out, then um, as long as Nest isn't getting the majority of aggro, then we're good. Honestly, um, you know, it's the fact it's when she starts getting stunned and is inactive that things get worse. Um, but you can see, like Veteran Han actually does quite a bit of damage. Um, it's really frustrating to see Finn and Poe just consistently just uh, trading uh, <laughs> trading their uh, taunts. So I was trying to just take out Poe there with Nest. Unfortunately, Vander Chewbacca didn't quite, uh, wasn't quite able to revive um, Kira there. He did revive her two other times before that. And um, so, anyways, got rid of normal Poe. He's not with OG Poe, I guess we should we can call him. Um, so did manage to take out Finn, but that of course triggered Veteran Chewie. Got got a couple extra turns. Uh, but now that Finn is gone, they don't really have much control. I guess Chewie can still stun uh, Nest. But, uh, like, I'm pretty sure I could have gotten way better banners than than I did with this team. But the fact was, I was pretty sure I was going to get the win anyways. And, like, why, why not just play with a team that's, I don't know, more fun? So, 55 is fine um, if, if you're pretty sure you're going to win. And, you know, I've, I've said that a lot. I'm pretty sure I'm going to win. Uh, but, like, I was feeling that confidence. Whether or not it was warranted, you guys will see in a little bit. But uh, I did feel confident. Now, going into this negotiator match, uh, this is the this is a pretty tricky match. Um, the with, with Ahsoka and Anakin, you don't want to bring Malevolence in. I actually almost did pull the trigger on bringing Malevolence uh, here and putting my own negotiator on defense. But... Decided I had a better shot at one-shotting this fleet. And here's the thing. If I can't beat fleet here, then I might just be sunk. Like, <laughs> my opponent... If, if, I mean, I guess I cleared the other zone, so probably still win. But with if I couldn't clear that back zone, if I couldn't take out those geos, then I was going to end up uh, in, in a pretty tricky situation, honestly. Um... So, uh, luckily I did, obviously, I cleared that, that fallback zone, but uh, it's still important to try to get the full clear, of course. I uh, need to get as many banners as possible and maintain our sterling reputation. Haha. <laughs> um, but we did manage to take out Houndstooth. This is just an old school fight, guys. This is something that I used to climb back in the day. Um, you, you try to take out uh, Anakin a couple times so that you can't uh, be... You can't be dazed by their own negotiator. If you bring him down below a certain health threshold, then he uh, then he gets his uh, the healing buff, whatever it is, um, and uh, from negotiator instead of doing the AOE. So that that's what I did here. Uh, managed to take out the Hound's Tooth pretty early on, actually, which is great. Um, Struggling to take out Anakin every time I'm close. I, it seems like they keep uh, blocking me in some way or shape or form um, So we're just gonna keep trucking the more characters and more things we can take out the easier It's going to be at least to potentially um, uh, clean up so uh, Fives got ambitious there tried to take out uh, clone sergeant and Ahsoka. I did manage to take her um her buff away, so that was good. Uh, get Plo in here to try to heal things up. And uh, one thing I will say, guys, I know that this is maybe a little bit uh, substandard in terms of just like I'm, I've never been great at fleet. I've never loved fleet. Um, there's a few different compositions I'm good against, but I need to get better. So uh, that's one thing I'm going to be focusing on in the future is trying to get better at fleets because I frankly could get I could be better. Um, just wasn't, it's not that excusable how bad I am at fleets, honestly. Um, so, uh, anyways, ended up with an okay total score, uh, 1871. And uh, here's your gratuitously fast uh, lack of uh, suspense shot. Uh, my opponent waited until the final hour to attack. And as predicted, they couldn't actually get through my front zone at all. Uh, they hadn't left themselves enough in the tank to be able to do that. They had just entirely planned on uh, me not being able to clear them, uh, just as bad as they couldn't clear me. So, haha um, -ha to my opponent. 
on the top zone. They actually failed against my Padme squad right away, uh, so that felt good. And then uh, on the bottom, of course, they uh, failed against my Kylo. Actually, I was surprised they would manage to kill my Ray team. They probably used some kind of Jedi uh, trickery there. I don't really know. Uh, one way or another, they couldn't kill Kylo, so that felt good. Um, and, and I guess I, I should clarify, my opponent only had a gear 12 Jedi Luke, which is why I placed the things that I did the way I did, because I was fairly sure they didn't, they hadn't left themselves enough uh, room to be able to take these out. So anyways, uh, my prediction proved correct. My score is not very inspiring, but I mean, it's a full clear, and really, if if you count the nice sister fail uh, as you know a plus an artificial plus twenty, like my score is still not great, but it, it's okay. And clearly, it wasn't that necessary to get a super high score. Um, these heavy defenses do just require a lot of weird teams to be able to clear with, uh, and I've been able to do it. So. Uh, Heavy defenses, guys, it's it's a thing. Once you get to higher GP levels, I think heavier defenses are better. Efficiency play starts being uh, less awesome. So, anyways, I'm going to let you all go here. Thank you all so much for watching. And remember that in all things, Zareth prevails.